Hello friends, my name is Nick and today we're going to explore 10 varieties of Hoya that you won't find at your local houseplant stores. I don't go to plant stores as often as I used to, but whenever I stop in, I'm always surprised at the selection that's available nowadays, especially with the Hoyas. I always see a variety of Hoya that I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is available, not online, in store right in front of me right now. And I'm always trying to stop myself from bringing it home because I have around 50 varieties of Hoya, so I don't need any more, but it's always exciting to bring in some new varieties into your home. That being said, I'm gonna share with you some varieties that I've personally never seen in store. Give me some Way. Maybe you've seen a couple of these in the store, but I've personally never walked into a houseplant store and seen any of these varieties. So if you're looking to branch out with your Hoya collection, I'm here to help you out today. And these are all plants that are easy enough to get your hands on. Just because you can't find them in store doesn't mean they're difficult to find. You just probably have to look for them online. And in fact, I'm going to let you know where I got every single one of these plants. So if you are looking for it yourself, I can at least push you in the right direction. So, oh my gosh, there's 10 to talk about today. That's kind of a lot. So the first one I want to talk about... Oh my God, it's so hard to decide. I literally love them all. Let's talk about the one that's actually sitting on set right now. I didn't want to remove it because it looks so nice. And this is probably one of the ones that I've talked about the most in the last year or so. I just really, really love this Hoya. It's really grown on me and it's grown well for me. I will say my past experience with Hoya, some of them will sit stagnant for a couple of years and kind of embarrass me. They make me feel like I'm doing something wrong and I probably am doing something wrong but uh, this one's grown very well for me. And in fact, most of the Hoyas I'm talking about today have grown very well for me. And many of my Hoyas are just growing really well for me now that it's the spring season. So I always love the growing season. It's always so exciting. And it always rekindles my joy for indoor gardening when my plants do start waking up after their slumbering season. So this is my Hoya Globulosa. It's got some really dynamic leaves. They're very long. They're very specifically shaped. There's a word for this. There's a word name for every single leaf shape. It's usually in the name. Think like Hoya abavada because the leaves are abavat, I think, and Hoya retusa, the leaves are retuse. You can look this up. I don't want to give you false information, but yeah, a lot of Hoya names do speak about their leaves. So these leaves are probably globulose. <laughs> don't quote me on that, but um, I'm probably not wrong. <laughs> So this is a really fun Hoya with the leaf shape, the leaf venation. It's very fuzzy, specifically on the bottom. It's just like one of the softest Hoyas I've ever gotten my hands on. Think like Peperomia Incana if you grow any Peperomias in your home or you've explored the Peperomia selection at your local houseplant store. It's really giving you that vibe. Even if I hold the leaves up close, you can probably see just how fuzzy the entire plant is. Even on the stems, there's a lot of fuzz, although they're not, the stems aren't they are pretty nice, but the leaves, oh, it's just such a nice sensory experience. I got this one from Steve's Leaves. I do have a commission code with them. If you want to save 15%, you can use code phillyfoliage on stevesleaves.com. I'll also leave that on screen and linked in the description below. When I got it, it was probably like five or six leaves. Like these leaves that are just like coming out of the pot pretty significantly are the ones that were on the plant when I got it. And then all of the ones that clearly have a lot of character, like this entirety of the vine down here, have all grown in since I brought this plant into my home, probably about a year and a half, maybe two years ago. Actually, no, no way it was two years ago. Definitely like a year, a year and a half. I am over-exaggerating as I tend to do. But it just got so much character. I love the way it looks in this burning pottery pot. I love the way it looks sitting on the shelf back here. I'm sure you're gonna be admiring it for the rest of this video, but it's been very easy care as are most Hoyas. I don't think any of the Hoyas I'm talking about today, I, I mean, I wouldn't steer you in the wrong direction, trust me, but all of the Hoyas I'm talking about today have been pretty easy growers for me, or at least they don't die easily. <laughs> some of them I'm aware can be a little bit more of an investment with your money. Um, I'm not the most up to date with what some of these plants cost in today's climate, but you can imagine Hoyas aren't the cheapest house plants out there. So most of these Hoyas are probably going to go anywhere from like $30 to $100 for a nice starter plant. Some of them might just be smaller cuttings depending on how rare they are. So keep, keep that in mind. I have this Hoya growing in some soil, a soil mix that's geared towards Hoyas with some orchid bark and some perlite or pumice added into it. And a little decorative stone. Oh, I forgot what that's called. I was one of those children who collected rocks and minerals. I'm sure that surprises none of you <laughs> with my addictive personality. But you'll see as we continue this video that I grow my Hoyas in many different methods. This is just one of the ways that I grow my Hoyas. And I don't find the best of luck growing Hoyas in soil. So the fact that this one's been growing so well for me in soil, I think really speaks a lot for it because I might look at a Hoya like this if I was to see it in a local house plant store, which like I said, I never have, but I might look at this and think that looks like it might be requiring a little bit more effort and a little bit extra care that I might not find success with on the first try. I might not want to invest money into it. So 
I'm happy to report that that's not the case, at least in my own experience. But if I had to pick like a top five Hoya list or if I was doing like a top five my favorite Hoyas, I think that one would make the cut at this point. Don't think I'm speaking out of turn saying that. There's so many incredible Hoyas. Like I said, I grow around 50 different varieties in my home. So there's a lot to choose from and a lot to love. Speaking of fuzzy, the second Hoya I want to talk about is this lovely Hoya CV Anne. This is looking very similar to like a Hoya Callistophylla, although it grows much quicker. I've had a Hoya Callistophylla for probably accurately around two years, maybe even more than that. And yeah, definitely longer than that. And uh, it's done barely anything for me. I think it's it, it's growing a couple leaves right now as I speak, but since then it's only grown one leaf in the past two plus years. So this one's grown more than that. I think this had probably three or four leaves on the plant when I got this. I got this from Plant Haven Toronto. I also have a commission code with them. You can use code NICK2023 to save 15%. And they actually have a spring sale going on right now as I'm posting this video. It's going till May 11th and you can use code SPRINGNICK, all caps, one word. I'm not gonna put it on screen since it's not evergreen. I'm gonna put it in the description below, but you can use that as a stackable code on top of their 20% off already on their website. So that's another 10%, 30% off, I guess is how the math works out. Yes, that is technically how the math works out. So you can save 30% total on their website if you do use code SPRINGNICK. So if you do wanna get some cool Hoyas, highly recommend checking out Plant Haven Toronto. In fact, a couple of the Hoyas that I'm gonna be talking about in today's video are going to be from them. And if you are curious, I do have a couple unboxing videos that I've done with them in the past. Anyway, they have some really incredible Hoyas, including this Hoya CV Anne. You can see it's grown this tendril right here. Um, it's got this peduncle on it. You can actually kind of see from how much actions going on. There's also some like sugar crystals coming off of it, but it's tried to bloom probably three or four times now and the flowers just have never made it. Maybe it's just putting more energy into this plant. And you can see, speaking of this plant, that I'm growing this one in sphagnum moss. So I received this in sphagnum moss and you can transfer them into semi-hydro or you can mount them or you can put them in soil, but I've been just experimenting with just plain up just planting my Hoyas in sphagnum moss. And so far it's been going really, really well. But back to this tendril, it's grown this tendril and slowly the leaves are coming in. These two leaves just grew in most recently. I can see there's some leaf buds on here. Looks like the leaf buds have come off of this one, but there's some leaf buds on this one. So you can just hold on to them, stay patient. Sometimes leaves will grow up here and they might not grow down here until later. I've had that happen before. Sometimes Hoyas just have a mind of their own. Uh, but this one's been, like I said, much faster growing than Hoya Callistophylla. So if you really do enjoy Hoya Callistophylla, I would highly recommend this. Oh, and I mentioned the fuzzy. <laughs> it doesn't look like a fuzzy plant. If you're, if you're familiar with Callistophylla or growing your home, it's a very rigid, rough one. But the undersides of these leaves are like very slightly, not slightly felt, they're more than slightly felt. Oh, it feels so nice. Another sensory experience. Not a reason to go out and get this plant. I think the foliage and the overall appearance of this is why I would be bringing it home. But it's a nice little perk when you go and you're just checking on your plants and you get to just go feel the nice, just fuzzy undersides of the leaves. And it's unexpected. I don't even think I realized that this is a quality that this plant has until a couple months after growing it. And it does look rather dashing with this blue planter, with this lemon lime foliage. I'm not a big fan of blue at all. I'm sure some of you know that. This is more of a gray blue. I'm trying to let it slide. <laughs> but it really does look really nice. And it's really turning me on to maybe bringing in some more blue, blue things into my home. I love earthy colors of any color, like earthy hues of any color. You'll see them around my home a lot. I just don't love blue because I think it's the most like unnatural of all of the colors. But even this one right here with this like grayness to it, excluding the big blue streak around it, it really is quite an earthy hue. So I'm giving it a pass. Here's another one that I got from Plant Haven in Toronto, actually rather recently. So this is a Hoya stenophylla. This is also one I have just planted right in the sphagnum moss and it's grown quite a bit for me. I got this in my more recent Plant Haven Toronto unboxing that must have only been like two, three months ago, no more than that. And when I received it, it was just these leaves that were down here, probably like up to here. It grew the leaf that was coming in when I got it, and then it kind of stopped for a moment as it was adjusting to my home, and then now it's just spitting out all of these leaves, and it's just such a fun plant to watch grow. And this will be really easy to propagate because it's just basically set up itself for me to, uh, once this grows in a little bit more, I can chop this right here. This will regrow. I can root this up in some sphagnum moss. I can probably even put it right back into the soil since I'm just growing it in sphagnum moss and I propagate my hoys in sphagnum moss nine times out of 10. I just find really good success with it. So yeah, this plant has already proven itself to be a really easy grower, but I just love this appearance. It is giving like 
similar to like the Hoya Retusa or the Hoya Linearis, but I think it's got more of that like Seropegia vibe to it. Also just gives me like pine needle meets rosemary needle. I don't know, I'm a really big fan of it. I like the way it holds itself. Obviously it's going to trail down as it gets heavier and heavier. And once this becomes just a trail of these just little, little sticks, it's gonna look amazing. But I like that it's a little bit more minute than the Hoya Retusa without those little butt ends, the Retus ends that the Hoya Retusa has. Don't know what stenophylla means. Have to do the research. I know phyla means leaf, so. Steno means something, but you can tell me in the description. I'll do my own research after this video. But it looks fantastic in this dark red planter with the darker green leaves. I guess the new ones are coming in rather lighter green since they are growing. I'm growing it right in my window right next to me here, an east-facing window, which is where I'm growing pretty much all of my Hoyas I have growing around these east-facing windows. I find they love the east-facing windows, especially compared to, I was growing a lot of them under grow lights before, and they were just not growing. But once I moved them into the east-facing window, now all of those Hoyas that were sitting stagnant for a couple of years are spitting out growth, and I'm so excited to watch them all grow over the next couple of months. Speaking of, this is a Hoya that has sat stagnant, slumbering for me for the past couple of years. This is my Hoya Elagiorum. I got this from Logies. I did an unboxing a couple years ago, probably like four years ago at this point. This tag says 829-2019, so I probably got it a couple months after then, I'm assuming. I think this one just really requires a direct sunlight to grow to its fullest potential. In fact, I'm happy it's still alive and hung on to at least a couple of leaves since then. Totally my fault. But now that it's growing near the east facing window, it's starting to spit out some new growth. So we have this nice new leaf right here and a small leaf that's just coming in right here. Looks like we might have something or other going on in the base of the soil as well, so we will see, but a plant that's probably gonna look fantastic in a couple months from now. It's got some decently plain foliage. This is probably one of the least exciting ones that we're gonna talk about in today's video. You can just see on the leaves, they got some slight veination to them. They're very waxy. I do always love a nice waxy Hoya. They give me good vibes, but I really just haven't gotten like the full experience of this plant yet because it hasn't really done anything for me. I believe it has red flowers. I don't really know too much about most of my Hoyas. Most of my Hoyas haven't flowered for me, although I'm getting a nice array of flowers around my home. My macrophylla is blooming. My Banyang Noi is up there about to spit out some nice blooms. I should have talked about that one today. Well, I'm not talking about today. It really isn't the most exciting in terms of foliage. And my Hoya Multiflora, as always, is always spitting out those shooting star flowers. So I love that. But yeah, it's always exciting when your Hoyas do grow enough that they do give you some nice blooms. So it's not always just about the foliage, it's about the flowers as well. I will happily report back to you on this one's growth. I think in a couple of months, once it spits out a couple more leaves, we're gonna have a really nice looking plant. But I'm a very patient person, as you can imagine, with me holding on to this for <laughs> three plus years with it literally doing nothing. I don't treat all of my plants with that kind of grace. Let's talk about this one next. This one, I feel like I've just been learning about it. I had to do some research on this because this is was sold to me as a Hoya crassipes. I think it's a Hoya diversifolia, like subspecies or affinity to crassipes. I'll do a little extra research so whatever I put on screen is hopefully the most accurate information out there. This one's becoming quite the mess as it's starting to grow, which I'm really enjoying. It was just a couple leaves when I got it, and now it's just spinning out new growth from all different corners of the pot. We got a new stem coming up here. We got a new stem here. There's one over here. There's some going on down here, like this right here is a new little stem coming off, and then I got the end here. So this is one that's just like begging to be put up on a bamboo hoop. Actually, I was trying to get a bamboo hoop in this pot last night, but it just kept flying out. Not small enough, a little too big. So until then, we have this just nice little spilly, outy plant. The leaves on this are very carnosa-ish. They're a little bit more like ovular though, which I think is really fun. They don't really have that much of like a point on the end. I guess some of them have a slight point, but most of the leaves are quite rounded around the edge, which I think is pretty fun. And they do have a really nice splashing to them. I got this one from Pepper's Greenhouse. I got this in person from Pepper's. It's probably on their website. I will let you look it up, but in the grand tradition of peppers being peppers and more enigmatic, I'm gonna make you Google it yourself and find it, so it's not gonna be in the description. So have fun with that, but <laughs> a really nice plant, probably one that newer Hoya enthusiasts might overlook because the foliage really isn't that wild in comparison to others. I think any that give more of a Carnosa vibe tend to steer people off for the Puba Calyx vibe because it's just something that you'll find in every houseplant store and have been able to find for the last 10 years, but I still Still think that's very exciting. In fact, I just, I love it when plants look like Hoya carnosa and Pubacalyx because I think they're like the best Hoyas out there. They're 
popular for good reason or common for good reason, less popular than others, I guess, but still popular. I just remember like the look of disappointment whenever people will come in the houseplant store and they'd be like, do you guys have Hoyas available? And I'd take them over to the Hoya section and be like, I have some Pubicalix and some Carnosa. <laughs> It's like, babe, what did you think we were going to have? Well, today, those people are probably a little bit more happy with what's available, but you can't please them all. Anyway, this Hoya was very inexpensive. When I purchased it, it was less than $10. That was before the pandemic, so I can't guarantee you what it would be like in today's climate, but uh, $25 or less, I feel pretty confident, is what a Hoya Diversifolia Craspies would be worth, just because it's not like any of those Hoyas that most people are going wild over. But if you like fun-shaped Hoyas and you appreciate splashy leaves, I would highly recommend purchasing this one. I think it's gonna grow on you the same way it's been growing on me. In fact, I really didn't notice it until it just really started growing for me, this growing season. It really just spat out all of this. I'm not kidding, in like the last couple of months, it's insane how much this has grown in such a short period of time, which just makes me really excited about all these other Hoyas I'm showing you that are just also now spitting out some nice new growth, especially if it's been a couple of years. Cough, cough, Alagiorum, cough. So the sixth one I'm gonna talk about, I think this is the sixth one, I haven't really been keeping track. This one's pretty neat. This is probably one of the most interesting ones that I have in my opinion. This is my Hoya, Kauai? <laughs> I'm like saying that and I'm like, I think that's what this Hoya is. Some of you might know better than me. So uh, I got this one on eBay. This is really the only one that I might not be able to tell you where I got it from because I cannot remember the seller's name by any means. I will give you the name. That's the best I can do. I do apologize. This is another one sat stagnant for me for a couple of years. I got this probably also like four years ago at this point, three years minimum. And it did barely anything for me. If you watch my past houseplant tours, it really is just like these couple of leaves that are like hanging out the side of the planter. I think maybe these leaves like grew when I was at my last apartment, but the rest of it were just old leaves from when the plant was delivered to me. Now in my new home, it is deciding that it wants to live and flourish. I actually just stuck this bamboo hoop in there last night when I was messing around with the other Hoya preparing for today's video. <laughs> and uh, this one vine has really taken to already because it like spins around all throughout the day. So I'm thinking this vine might also, as it seems, it's gonna start to work its way around. And we got a couple other vines like this one right here and there's another one down here, another one here. So we've got a lot of new growth coming in on this plant. And even just now, like one month in since it started spitting out that growth, it's looking completely different than it did the last few years that I've had this plant. And I'm so thrilled. I love these large leaves. They're giving similar vibes to like Hoya macrophylla, but not the variegated version, which is the most common version you're gonna find when you walk in your local houseplant stores, which makes no sense to me. Where's the non-variegated version? Why isn't that everywhere? I want it. <laughs> this is giving me that, so it's, it's satisfying that craving that I'm having for an unvariegated macrophylla. Just a nice full pot of non-variegated macrophylla just sounds, oh, it sounds so nice. It sounds similar to this. Now that this is considering itself to be a nice full pot and give it a couple more months once these nice new leaves are growing in. We got some new leaves down here, got some new leaves here. You can see them all over the place and there's plenty of new leaves that you can see right here that have still yet to grow in that are just gonna probably hang out for a couple of weeks before they decide to spit themselves out. And I have really learned with this Hoya that I need to water my Hoyas way more than I think. I had this sitting in my window in my old apartment and it was hanging up by one of those like orchid hangers, the metal orchid hanger. So there was no saucer attached. So I had to pull it down every time I watered it and as easy that it, as that is, I didn't do it as often as I was supposed to, which is why the plant, while it was receiving plenty of good light, was just not growing. It wasn't receiving enough water. I water this thing like every four or five days now, and it's receiving the exact same amount of light as it was before, and it's spinning out all this growth now, and it makes me think, what if I was watering my Hoya more the last year, and the year before that, and the year before that? So this really has been a learning lesson for me, and has shown me how important it is to water your Hoyas more than you think. You treat them like succulents sometimes and you let them dry out, but the roots do not appreciate drying out. While they will withstand it, they're just not going to grow. And with a plant as beautiful as this, I want it to grow. I love the gorgeous light green leaves as they're coming in and the way it contrasts with the purple stem. So it's just so nice to see this plant finally growing so well for me. I'm thrilled to share it with you guys today and I'm thrilled to share with you what it's going to look like in the next couple of months throughout the growing season, as I keep saying for every single one of these, but it's just so nice. So many of my Hoyas just did not grow, like at all. And so many of them are growing so well for me now, so.
You learn from your mistakes. I always learn from my mistakes. That's my best quality, I will say. So I've shown you Hoyas that are growing in soil, which is the most classic way to grow Hoyas. I've shown you growing Hoyas in sphagnum moss, which is also quite classic. It's nothing new about it, but for me, it's a little bit new <laughs> growing them in my home with sphagnum moss. Also, I should mention, I don't think I really showed you, but the Alagiorum is just a terracotta pot sitting inside this uh, wicker basket, so no tricks there. Now I'm gonna show you, I'm growing this Hoya right here in semi-hydro, so, or passive hydro, some people call it. So this is just sitting inside this net pot, inside a non-porous planter. This is actually just a little uh, tumbler thingy that I made when I did ceramics. And there is Lekka pebble sitting inside here. There's a couple different types of material that you can use. And there's water inside here. So there's no water inside this. It's just sucking up the water from the roots and the pebbles themselves are just sucking up the moisture. And that's how this plant's growing. This is a newer method for me. I did this for my houseplant tips and tricks. Oh, it's so hard to say. Houseplant tips and tricks series that I do with repotme.com here on my channel, which I highly recommend checking out if you haven't seen. It's a really fun series that I do and it might be a sponsored series, but they let me do whatever I want and I think it shows because our projects are fun and it's not jamming things down your throat. Anyway, off my soapbox. So <laughs> this is my Hoya Passiflora. Questioning my pronunciation on that. This is one I also got from Plant Haven Toronto. And this one has grown a decent amount for me. It's probably grown like five to 10 leaves since I've brought it into my home within the last year. And the leaves themselves are just so fun. It's giving like Kentiana, Hoya Kentiana or Weyadiyai, but like if you crinkle it up in your hand and it didn't break, which obviously a Hoya leaf would do, but if it just like crinkled it like paper and then you unrolled it, that's what this gives me. Or like a mini Kentiana, because those exist and they're adorable. Anyway, this is giving me that and I love it. And the color of these leaves just are complemented so well by the color of this planter. I don't know what I intended for this to be when I made it, but it does fit this net pot incredibly well. People say that they have much more luck growing Hoyas and semi-hydro. I found some good luck with it. I think I find the best luck with sphagnum moss so far. I'd say sphagnum moss is the best method for me, followed by semi-hydro, followed by soil. I think they're all fabulous ways to grow your Hoyas. So if you're growing them all in soil, don't feel stressed. But if you're struggling with some Hoyas in soil, consider trying them out in sphagnum moss or semi-hydro, or just take a cutting of it while it's lasting. Don't go ahead and repot it and switch it over, but take a nice cutting of it before it moves on to another life and stick it in some semi-hydro pebbles, the Lekka pebbles, or stick it in a little pot of sphagnum moss inside a plastic bag to give it some extra humidity and you might have some extra luck. I have heard people say that they like semi-hydro because it keeps pests away. Not in my experience. I think this one is the only Hoya I'm talking about today that has some mealybug on it. I just noticed it actually as I was sitting on the film. Nice little pocket of mealybug. This came from my home. It's not from the cellar. I have mealybug and thrips and spider mites and all of the above in my home. I take care of it, but I also have 350 plants. So it's kind of inevitable that during the growing season, I'm gonna have some pests in my home. Mealybugs are nothing to worry about, especially compared to like thrips. They're kind of something to worry about. So this plant's not in any danger. All I have to do is take a Q-tip, soak it with some rubbing alcohol and just dab it where I need to and it'll kill them and do the job. But with all of your Hoya, you always gotta keep a really close eye where the leaf meets the stem. That's where the mealybugs love to hide on the Hoyas or on the undersides of the leaves, especially if there's a bunch of leaves, like a cluster of leaves, and there's a good underside leaf that's like pressed up against another Hoya leaf. Whew, that thing's gonna get covered in mealybug. You might be surprised when you find it. You might just wanna take that whole leaf off, but rubbing alcohol does wonders. So don't get scared of any mealybugs. They're not anything to be scared of but they are absolutely something you're going to experience if you're growing Hoyas in your home. In fact, I'm sure nine out of 10 of you already deal with mealybugs if you are watching this as a Hoya collector. But back to this Hoya Passiflora that I'm literally obsessed with. I can't wait to watch this one grow even more. This is another one like the Hoya Stenophyla that I'm really excited to see what it's gonna look like when it's just like a full waterfall of plant. Could probably get propagating this. The quicker you propagate your plants or the sooner you propagate your plants, the sooner you're gonna have more plants to work with and the sooner those plants can grow into more plants. But I really just love the way this looks. It's just like a big old cluster of a little vine sticking off the side here. It's got a lot of character. And from the way the stem is holding itself up, I think it's gonna take like another foot of stem before it's gonna really hang itself the way that I want it to in my vision, my envisionment. Anyway, fabulous Hoya. I'm super excited for this one to grow. I'm like, it's fine. I think I see some new growth coming in at the base, which is really exciting. 
Such a cool Hoya. Plant Haven Toronto has some really, really cool Hoyas. Speaking of really cool Hoyas, here's another one from Plant Haven Toronto. This is one of my new like favorite Hoyas. I think this would probably be on my top five list. And it's just growing for me too, which is very exciting. So this is a Hoya UT033. I had to really access my prefrontal cortex for that one. So this is giving me Peperomia elongata. Just like I was saying, that one was giving me Peperomia incana. This is giving me Peperomia elongata. And I love Peperomia. Peperomia are one of my favorite plants to collect. Dare I say, I like to collect them a little bit more than Hoya. So obviously I have a soft spot for this one. And I love Peperomia elongata. I cannot grow it successfully. I've tried twice now, three strikes you're out, I got one more try. I mean, my other one's not dead. It's hanging on by a thread, but this is growing for me. So it's giving me everything I need for my Peperomia elongata in a Hoya. So you can see I have some new growth coming off right here on this part of the stem. There's one leaf and two leaves and the stem's continuing up here at the top of the leaf or the top of the stem. I cannot get my plant anatomy correct today. I have this leaf coming up here with a new bit of stem right there. And then actually in the base of the plant, I don't know if you're really gonna be able to see, but in like the armpit joints, that's what we're calling it now, of both this leaf and this leaf down here, this leaf set right here, there is new growth coming out. So that's four new growth tips. Obviously these two are gonna be a little bit more active. These two might start to jump into action down the line, or if these grow really nicely, I could chop this plant right here, chop this plant right here, have the cutting of this after it settles in. I don't wanna cut this right now as these leaves are growing in or they are going to die very fast. But once they grow in nicely, I have a couple leaves on each stem, cut this back, cut this back. These will probably shoot into action, propagate two new plants. So easy, so exciting, so rewarding, so fabulous. <laughs> what? Um, yeah, so <laughs> love that about this, but just love the overall vibe of this. Uh, this is one I'm going to be babying because I love the way these leaves look. I want a full ass pot of this and I'm going to have a full ass pot of this. Law of attraction, baby, it works, try it. But until then, we're just going to patiently wait. And it's probably only gonna be about another month or so before I can go ahead and start chopping and propping this plant. And like I was saying earlier with the Sanophyla, it's just sitting inside this pot of sphagnum moss. And since that's how I would go ahead and propagate it anyway, I could probably just make a little hole and stick the plant cutting in there. Maybe dab it with some rooting hormone to encourage it to grow a little bit better. And before we know it, we are going to have that full ass pot of Hoya UT033. And it doesn't end there. I actually have one more Hoya that I want to talk about from Plant Haven Toronto today. Don't forget that you can use that code SPRINGNICK to save an extra 10% on top of that 20% up until May 11th. And then now, or after that, if you've already used that code, you can use code, what was it? NICK2023, that was it. Once again, we'll be on screen double coding you today. Why not? I don't talk about them often enough and they're a really incredible company. So I highly recommend checking them out. Also, if you're in Canada, I feel like a lot of the companies I talk about only ship the United States, but this place ships to Canada and the United States. So loves it. Should have said that at the beginning, but I'm sure with the fact that it's called Plant Haven Toronto, you probably surmise that information. Anyway, this also has like a UT. It may be like um, accessing my prefrontal cortex once again. Is that the part of the brain? Doesn't matter. I'm a very scattering person, as you can probably tell. This is a UT, I wanna say, or Hoya UT. What's coming to my tongue is 152. We'll see if I'm right when it comes on screen. Uh, it's also called the Hoya Wuliniana. Why can't it just be one name? Why do we need both? Anyway, this I know is uh, one of the owners of Plant Haven Toronto's favorite Hoyas. She's probably like me and can't pick a favorite, so has like a, a couple that she would pick on like her top five, but I know she loves this Hoya so much because the new growth, if it's getting some good sun stress from some bright sun, so mine's taking an east facing window. So you can see the new growth that came in most recently has this nice purple sun stressing to it. Normally with Hoyas, you're gonna see some like red sun stressing, think like the Hoya Sunrise or Hoya Obscura. This is giving purple. I love purple. That's why I put it in this green planter right here. Not only are these green leaves going to complement, this is also from Breading Pottery, but complement this beautiful green planter, but green and purple, aren't they? Is that the color wheel opposites? I did not take art class growing up. I was not that kind of student. I was a music student. I think I did some color complementing, contrasting, whatever it is. 
love that for me. It sounds like I need to do some research on that, but it just looks so fabulous. I need to find a really good spot for this because I, I have it in a good spot, but I'm doing some rearranging soon. Let's put it that way. And after I rearrange, I need to make sure this is like front and center, just with the spilling off the front because I just, I love it, but it still needs to be in bright sunlight. So it'll be sitting right in front of the window, don't you worry. We're gonna do a house plant tour soon. I'm just doing a couple more change-ups in my apartment this month 1000% there's going to be a house plant tour this month. I know it's been a long time I have this unspoken tradition that I seem to do every single time I film a house plant tour where I film the house plant tour and then I move everything around like I'm thinking so I'm thinking about this time and I know I'm moving stuff around so I'm moving everything around and then I'm filming the house plan tour and that's just gonna make me feel so much better inside and it's gonna make you feel better because everything's gonna be looking even better. And last but not least, we made it to number 10, our final Hoya that in my own experience, I've never seen at a local house plant store. So a little bit more fun and interesting for you. So this is a Hoya Fichii, Fichii? Not positive on the pronunciation. I also got this one from Steve's Leaves. And this is still sitting inside its plastic nursery planter. Actually, I haven't repotted it yet because it's growing so well for me. And when I'm repotting Hoyas in soil, I said Hoyas in soil are the, my least luck that I have. I sometimes find they need some time to acclimate versus when I'm putting them in semi-hydro or sphagnum moss. It doesn't seem like they get shocked at all. They just keep on growing and just are perfectly happy. So because this is growing really well for me right now, I am leaving it inside this plastic nursery planter. Maybe at the end of the growing season, I'll repot it. Maybe in the middle, maybe come next growing season. I don't know. I didn't think that far ahead. I am not a planner like that. So we'll just see what happens. This has some really lovely veination on it, but the leaves stay small. So a lot of the time when I see these really veiny Hoya leaves, they're on large leaves, which is very dynamic and lovely. Love a large leaf Hoya, obsessed with it. But I also really love this really tiny leaf. Well, it's not that tiny, but it's smaller than Carnosa. Just tiny little leaves with the, just very strong veination on them. It's just going everywhere. I got this mess of a tendril up here, which is just doing whatever and whatnot. And then these two or three down here, that are just starting to work the way off the side of the planter. It looks fantastic. It's this kind of Hoya that just sits inside this plain terracotta planter. And you don't need a fancy planter with it. It just looks amazing as is. And that's how you know you got a good Hoya. This could definitely at some point in the near future use one of those bamboo hoops or like a bamboo teepee or something to allow it to grab onto, as you can see, it's just grabbing onto itself and we got a new growth thing right here. So it's just gonna fall over eventually or it's gonna grab onto something else in its vicinity. So we gotta give it something. And these tiny little leaves, tiny little, cute little veinated, veination, veiny, I don't know the word I'm looking for. The cute little veiny leaves are gonna look so cute when they're just full on wrapping around some kind of support. I think it's gonna look fantastic. <sighs> this is such a gorgeous Hoya. Like honestly, probably top five. I might be overstepping my boundaries when I'm talking about this top five thing, but I'm 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 a really, really big fan of this one. I tried growing it before I got a cutting from a friend like four or five years ago, and it did not grow that well for me. I just kind of sat stagnant. My fault, 1000%. Just had it sitting under those Amazon.com grow lights, and those are no good. So my plant did not grow well at all, and eventually just kind of died, which is sad. But I've learned my lesson, and now this one's sitting in the bright, direct sun of the east-facing window, and it's flourishing. I think any windowsill is perfect for a Hoya. I think a south-facing window might sun bleach some of them. Like even this one, you can see it's not really sun stressing. It's getting kind of like a little bit yellow at some spots, but I guess it's getting a little red. I guess it's getting a little bit of red on it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have experience with this one. Anyway, a, a window's Perfect. Any type of window, try your Hoyas in there before you try growing them under like cheap grow lights or anything like that. Unless you got good grow lights. My good Soltech light definitely grows my plants really well. And you can use code NICK2023 to save 15% on Soltech.com. Of course, I can't forget about that. We're doing all the discount codes today. So no bad grow lights, no cheap grow lights. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but I just notice a hundred thousand percent of a difference with actual good quality grow lights than I do with the crappy Amazon ones. So yeah, let's leave it there. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me on today's video. 10 varieties of Hoya, 
that you won't find at your local house plant stores, but are still easy enough to find. Maybe not inexpensive, but not too expensive. Like I said, I think most of these are going to be ballpark, like $30 to $100 for the most expensive ones. But like, honestly, I'm looking around and I'm like, I don't know if any of these go for $100. That's excessive. I think like 40 to $70. I think that's like, the sweet spot where most of these Hoyas are gonna fall into. But as I said, I believe most of the places that I purchased these from in the description below. Uh, you can check out my description for any of those discount codes if you're curious on saving yourself some money while also supporting a small business and supporting a creator. So thank you so much in advance. If you do use any of those codes, I do really appreciate it. Thank you again for joining me. If you don't already, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Philly Foliage. You can subscribe to my Patreon if you want to support me monetarily. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.